The first casualty of war, of course, is truth. And the coronavirus has turned into a war. A war against Chinese people. There's been a tripling of attacks on Chinese people in Britain in just three months. Or even people who look like they might be Chinese, like my own pregnant wife who's had it in the neck. Your ethnicity is to blame for all of this, someone told her in a pleasant middle-class suburb. War against Chinese people in the United States with a gigantic spike of hateful attacks on a people that uh, a little more than a hundred years ago were subjected to mass lynching in San Francisco, in a place where during the Second World War, millions of people who looked like my wife were interned just because of what they looked like and where their ancestors came from. But much more seriously, war against China is definitely coming down the pipeline. The United States has sent its warships into the South China Sea, the clue being in the name. Doing so, they say, in the name of insisting on the international sovereignty over waters, which are clearly and have been for centuries recognized as China's waters. War against China on the economic level. Donald Trump promising to exact a gigantic price from China for the coronavirus. His handling of the coronavirus having turned the American death toll into far and away the most devastating in the world. There's threats that the United States may renege on its debts to China, may confiscate Chinese assets in the United States, a ramping up of weapons sales and diplomatic and political support for Taiwan. Half a century after Richard Nixon agreed, there was only one China. All over America's pattern of allied countries in the European Union, but particularly here in Britain, a thoroughgoing deep dive investigation is to take place into Britain's relations with China. Having alienated all the countries of the European Union, it seems we are bent upon alienating just about everyone else. This is extremely dangerous talk. First of all, the coronavirus, according to the American chief of staff of the armed forces, did not come from a laboratory, did not come from the laboratory in Wuhan. Wuhan, by the way, has not had a single coronavirus case in the last 29 days. And Cambridge University located cases of coronavirus hundreds of miles to the south of Wuhan, far away from any laboratory, as being the likely source of the Chinese outbreak of the virus. But it's increasingly clear to me that the virus didn't come from China at all, never mind from a faulty laboratory in Wuhan, which, by the way, is funded by the United States government to the tune of millions of dollars a year. Now we know that in France, in December, there were cases of the coronavirus 19. Now we know that there are dozens, hundreds, maybe thousands of different kinds of coronavirus, some of them even more deadly than the one which was identified first in China and mapped its RNA, its DNA, carefully charted rapidly by Chinese scientists and then sent out as a warning all around the world. The types that are affecting Europe are quite different and more deadly than the type that affected China. The type that affected the east coast of the United States far more deadly than the type quite different which affected the west coast of the United States. So if as seems overwhelmingly likely and in the view of the U.S. Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces, the case that the coronavirus is a naturally occurring phenomenon, it's clear that it was naturally occurring 
all over the world. So to blame China is not just fatuous, but it's extremely dangerous because it's a look over there maneuver to obfuscate the fact that the United States and Great Britain are far and away the most fatally affected places on the earth. Now, you might think that's just an unlucky coincidence. Nothing to do with our two blonde bombshell political leaders. And if you do, I've got a bridge here in London that I can sell you at a knockdown price. They say there must be an independent investigation into China's handling of the coronavirus. I'm all for that, though I'm not sure how independent it can be when the United States government, Pompeo and Trump, have already found China guilty of being the cause of this whole thing. But I'm in favor of that. But I also want an investigation into how the British government handled this so catastrophically badly. And I'm sure the people in the United States also want the same. This is an election year in America. So a bit of wagging the dog was always likely to be the course of events. The Democrats hate Russia. The Republicans hate China. Neither can deal with the fact that they are two cheeks of the same backside offering the same hot air to the people in the place of things which will defend America and make it truly great again. Well, the first casualty of war is truth. There's a whole lot of lies in the air, along with all those coronavirus.